so in the most basic terms, you want to refinance when you can make a less than desirable mortgage into a mortgage that is more desirable and more beneficial to you. Now, the issue and the reason that you wouldn't just refinance every time that there's uh, the ability to get a lower rate is that refinancing is costly. Just like with your original mortgage, refinancing does have closing costs attached to it. And so what you are forced to do then is you are forced to do a break-even analysis of refinancing your home. So you have to determine based on the cost of the refinance and the perceived benefit to you over a certain period of time, whether or not the refinance is worth it uh, to go through that process and get a new mortgage. Because sometimes, even if you can get a lower rate, making back the money that you're going to spend on the refinance uh, doesn't happen overnight. And so it may not be something that's uh, extremely beneficial to you. Uh, typically, you know, if you have longer on a loan, uh, it can be more beneficial. Uh, it's all just going to depend on what your rates are and how long it takes to recoup the money that you pay out in closing costs. So I say just in general, the idea of refinancing tends to work if you fall into one of these four different areas uh, in your particular life. So um, one, you have an adjustable rate mortgage or an ARM. Uh, the most common are like the five one ARMs. Uh, if you have one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to dig into that here. Uh, but if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, uh, then your rates being adjustable is not uh, too beneficial to you uh, over the long run because you can have spikes in interest rates. And, and that was a big issue during the housing crisis uh, back in 07 through 09. So um, that, that's a, a particular place where you're going to want to look at things and go, well, maybe my adjustable rate is not what we want. Because typically what arms do is they start with some fixed rate, some short-term fixed rate uh, that they offer you. And then after they give you that period of having a fixed rate, then it is your interest rate is adjusted relative to uh, things like LIBOR, which is uh, the London Interbank Offering Rate, right? This is just some benchmark rate uh, that, that follows the economic climate and follows how interest rates are generally. And so the risk is then given to you. It's transferred from the lender to you as a homeowner, and then you have the risk of interest rates changing. And that can cost you a lot in the long term and can be a good reason that you would want to refinance, especially refinancing to a fixed rate mortgage. Then another good reason to refinance would be if your mortgage is longer than 15 years. We've talked about how we don't like the 30-year mortgage. We've talked about how uh, the 30-year mortgage is extremely costly uh, and is something we should not be taking out on a regular basis. And given that that is the fact, uh, then we want to keep with my suggestion of the 15 year or less. So if you do have a 30, as we've talked about previously, and the interest rates are really, really similar to the 15, uh, then just pay the 30 like a 15 if you have the discipline to do so. But if the interest rates differ greatly, then this may be a really good chance for you to refinance to a 15 year mortgage and uh, pay your home off quicker. That's the whole point of all of this is we want to pay our home off as expeditiously as we can, right? Because what are we trying to do? We are trying to get to a point where we either have a shorter length or we have lower rates. In both cases, that's going to decrease costs in, towards interest, which is what we are not trying to pay. We are trying to earn compound interest in our investments, not continue to pay interest on loans. So uh, it's going to decrease our long-term interest and that is going to do us the most good uh, in our lives of reaching financial freedom and getting our house paid off early. Then obviously something that I brought up earlier as a primary reason why one would consider a refinance is a lower rate. Just you have a high rate mortgage and you want to get a lower rate mortgage and that is a, an extremely valid point. Uh, but you want to make sure that you can find a refinance that's going to give you uh, one or two or more percent of uh, cushion between what your current rate is and the rate that you're going to get in the refinance. And the whole reason that you want that cushion there 
is so you can actually make money on the refinance. That way you can actually save money uh, because like we said earlier, there are those closing costs. So when you're doing your break-even analysis and you, you, let's say you were only saving you know, a quarter of a percent or half of a percent, uh, it's gonna take time uh, in order to pay back the interest that you're trying to get rid of with the refinance and and it may not ever happen given you know how small a spread may be but uh, if you get a substantial spread on the two interest rates the one you have and the one you are going to get in the refinance uh, then it can be a really good idea to go ahead and refinance down to that lower rate thus decreasing your costs in the long term because again that is our goal decrease your costs and in that particular case you want to make sure that you plan on staying in that house over a long period of time if you are deciding to refinance it to a lower rate. That way you can make up those closing costs because it would be useless and actually a negative impact if you did a break-even analysis and said, okay, it's gonna take three years to recoup the, the closing costs and then I'll be on the positive side of the refinance. But then you decided to sell your house and buy a new one within that three-year period. Well, then you'd be paying closing costs on a new home. That doesn't make any sense at all uh, because then you would have never recouped what the refinance was supposed to be for you. Uh, so doing some long-term planning is extremely important in this particular uh, decision-making process. So just make sure that you're doing that uh, and understand that it's not as simple as I can get a lower rate. It's I can get a lower rate and uh, this is going to be a benefit to me in the long run uh, because in the short run, it would obviously be a negative, you know, it would be a negative event given the closing costs that are associated. Now, this fourth and final reason why you may want to refinance your home has something to do with something we've talked about previously, and that is HELOCs, or also known as second mortgages. Now, we gave the suggestion that if the second mortgage was more than half of your annual income, then you would go ahead and put it on the part of the financial action plan where you are paying off your house early. That way, uh, you're not being bogged down and not able to invest and not able to build a good emergency fund by a large debt amount. So if this is the case and you did lump that with your mortgage, then it may be smart to go ahead and refinance that second mortgage along with your first into one mortgage. What this can do for you is get you a favorable rate on both. So looking at the rates and you would still do a break even analysis and make sure it was uh, beneficial to you, but typically that second mortgage uh, would have a higher rate than your typical first mortgage. Therefore, you should be able to get something that's a little more favorable for you. But just remember here, I, I don't want you to forget that if you are having a, a HELOC or a second mortgage that is less than half of your income, then remember that that is going into your debt repayment plan. You are not supposed to be doing that once you get um, into the, you know, paying off your house early. That, that's not supposed to get lumped into that step if it is less than half your annual income. Uh, but if it is more, uh, then we can definitely do this. Just make sure you follow that rule. Otherwise, what you're going to end up doing is just deferring a small debt that you can go ahead and pay off uh, in a, you know, reasonable amount of time. So I don't want you to get, you know, too bogged down uh, in that because we have covered that previously, but just know that this is a viable option if you want to go ahead and get those payments lumped together and hopefully decrease your costs, uh, especially in the break even. 